Kevin, you're on mute. Do we get a point? Sure. Yeah, I know. Wish I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Well, welcome back. Um, and let's let's immediately get, get, swiftly move on to our, our our facilitators for each of the each of the groups. And so, Councillor Milne, I believe you were uh, self selected for the uh, for the first uh, first group. Uh, okay, I'm doing it again. All right, fair enough. Um, so we looked at three questions again. Uh, the first one was uh, which were all spatial options one to four were most suitable. Uh, dispersed approach across settlement, the current strategy, focus on larger settlements, focus growth on rural hubs, focus growth within settlements. Um, and to an answer that question, uh, the, um, the the general feeling I got was that um, uh, uh, that that a balanced growth, uh, balanced approach, but um, uh, option four was certainly favoured by Councillor Davis. Um, uh, Councillor Jinman made some very valid points about uh, what what actually do do we do the rural areas themselves need uh, and uh, and how do we distinguish between need and want obviously there is uh, a certainly in in Councillor Jinman's area and possibly across many of the rural areas in Hereford a very strong a desire for second homes and the the expansion of tourist tourism um which is which is possibly not what we're necessarily about here um and what uh, is genuinely can be defined as need uh councillor gentleman made the made, made made some very good points about employment opportunities and the uh a, a, um a, a, a accessibility of uh of, of good schools and the uh, um, and the limitations that uh, that exist and how difficult it is to uh, to overcome those limitations in the terms of the size of the schools and the sewage plants and water supply and and so on uh, to to meet expanded de demand. Um, so I think the gen general feeling was uh, focus growth within within settlements outside A and Bs and conservation areas was pretty broadly the answer to that one. For uh, on, uh, question two, uh, current advantages and disadvantages of the current settlement hierarchy um the uh, uh, uh I, I got a very strong sense certainly from councillor harvey that what we really need to do is is some horizon scanning here and not just uh analyzing the existing data uh and making forecasts which tend to be relatively short uh terms in the future obviously we're, we've got, we're looking ahead at least to 2041 and what sort of lives are we we got we're anticipating leading in 2041 um and how uh certainly the trip the, the will the the current trend towards um, um more home-based work and a more automation more um digital work uh affect our requirements for for housing um and um uh, will we be, will we then be expected to, to be delivering more live work units um so that so to, to facilitate that um i'm not quite sure we quite got to the grip, to, total grips as to what advantages and disadvantages the council settlement hierarchy but never nevertheless that's some sort of summary on the third question what services and facilities should be should be present um within within a harbor large settlement or a smaller settlement um we had a, a good deal of discussion um uh, certainly around uh, uh, the the value of the existing hubs that we're familiar with um uh, uh, at uh, Peter Church and uh US Harold Pont Trilus uh they're, they're, they're recognizing that um one of the chronic problems we we suffer suffer in the in the rural areas is is of loneliness and uh, uh how essential they are for well-being so uh, any any facilities within within a hub that that includes the the basics that say Peter Church has the mobile library that you know the the pop up shop and uh, Jason the church and so on are are all essential there. Um, I think I probably said enough. I've done more than my three minutes already. So thanks, Councillor Mel. Councillor Swinrose, are you doing the uh, feedback for your group uh, again? I, I am. Uh, yep. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, same same questions. Um, the, the there was discussion around definitions of uh, a rural hub versus a larger settlement, and exactly what's a smaller settlement. Uh, so I think you know it's a bit more sense of what what is meant by that would would be helpful. Um, the uh, dispersed model. 
uh, was felt that it, the, it hadn't, it, it doesn't deliver uh, affordable housing and things like that because you can't build to scale. And this is a frustration in the villages, you know, that they don't get anything, you just get endless five bedroom houses and it's very annoying for everyone. Um, and so that, that, that simply is not doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so, the, so therefore, the uh, options two and three uh, seem to be more um, more likely to produce the benefits that that, that should accrue to housing uh, in settlements, and but you need services to go along with them. Um, the question about A O N B. Uh, we wasn't really discussed. I, I, you know, the thing with the AOMB is it obviously it encompasses uh, stunning, beautiful, pristine landscape, and it also encompasses uh, very uh, intensely built up areas. So I think a blanket uh, decision probably not a good idea. Um, the uh, services that were discussed were bus, school, GP as basic services and the hubs there should be an understanding that a hub would get then uh investment for uh services as well so there's there's an upside to being a hub um question two again the the dispersed model the in my recollection that the, the nuance of of table 414 and 415 was lost to inspection and that really uh you know you create a huge problem which 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 has which has uh, manifested in endless five bedroom houses in the countryside and not enough affordable housing coming forward um and and the nuance being lost and so it just it, i would have to say it was it's not it doesn't work in the rural setting um and then the uh the, the what services would would be expected in a hub uh we 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 felt uh primary and secondary school gp dentist or, or health provision of some sort bus employment digital connectivity uh pub shop post office a last mile solution for delivery place of worship in a village hall and for larger settlement school digital connectivity village hall bus shop place of worship and the potential for growth uh, an, an enterprise of some sort. So it has a headroom uh, in some way. Uh, smaller settlements, village hall, place to worship, digital connectivity, school. Thank you very much. Very good list there. Uh, Councillor Watson, is, uh, yep. are you the excellent? Yes, lucky last. Yeah, thanks. Um, our group had to um, uh, look at question three before answering question one. And uh, we had quite an interesting conversation. So Paul Nathan had us jumping through the various slides. Um, um, the definition of a hamlet and a village is given in the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, and like Alyssa was saying, is that we was talking about the need for a clear definition about what is a rural hub. Um, because a rural hub is incredibly um, subjective and who it has been viewed by. Um, so Ross on Wye could be seen as my local hub and I live um, two and a half, three miles away from that. Um, so we were um, saying that, yeah, just to be very clear, and we thought option two was... Um, uh, the best of the options in terms of enabling larger settlements to um, to grow, but the larger settlement had the church, the school, the bus, the village hall, a community centre, a pub, a shop, you know, um, and mains drainage. Um, but also having the connectivity, um, broadband, and uh, transport services. The other thing is that um, we. And now um, Nathan said it um, because I was describing that I live on the Gloucestershire, Monmouthshire borders. So my ward is the, the furthest south east. And um, people don't necessarily access all their services in Herefordshire. Um, they go to a GP in 
Gloucestershire, so access their healthcare services in Gloucester and Cheltenham because the bus service is actually better in the Forest of Dean than it is actually in Herefordshire in this neck of the woods. Or if you're in Woodchurch, you go to and Ganaru, you go to uh, Monmouthshire. So they were accessing Monmouthshire's recycling rather than Ross and Weiss recycling, recycling centre because it's actually closer for them. And it was a lot more uh, convenient to go shopping and do your recycling and your um, you know, rubbish tip, um, trip at the same time. But that, of course, stopped when Monmouthshire Council then brought in the cards and said no more. So everyone now has to come to Ross, which is actually quite a faff. Um, we also, um, I also raised the issue about many homes are built in my ward, but actually are snapped up for second home ownership to be used as holiday lets. Um, I've got one of the highest level of second home ownership in my ward. Um, and, and this is where it needs protection for key workers and agricultural workers. Option four, we looked at, and I had to declare a, a vested interest in this one because of my, um, I'm the vice chair of the Y Valley AUMB Joint Advisory Committee. And I was saying it's, um, I think many of my um, residents living in my ward would say, yes, please, Yolandi, that would be a really good one. But at the moment, it's just not realistic. We've got other things coming through, like the Glover Review and the legislation that's been put forward forward for that and also the leveling pa leveling um, up paper um, and we were talking about what is rural proofing you know what does that actually mean um, so we're going to have to wait for central government to actually uh, give us those definitions so I think that was about it yeah okay thanks thanks Councillor Watson thank you all for that uh, for that input um, I now move on to uh, Kevin Singleton who will provide you with the next steps. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this very quickly, so it won't take up too much time. But um, obviously this consultation is ongoing until the end of this month. The team is already starting to, to, to look at um, various topic um, based options for the policies themselves. And that will be the focus of the next consultation, hopefully um, a, a couple of months down the line in, in, in the spring before looking in more detail at place-based options and, and site and area for, for, for development. Again, late, late, later in the spring. Um, the, the intention is to try and draw up a draft plan by the end of the year, um, to go to full council for approval early in 2023, and then obviously later in the year to, to submit to Secretary of State for examination in public with um, we lose control in terms of a timetable at that point, but we, we would hope that we would get a report back from an inspector by middle of 2024. So that's that's the intention of the of the of the current timetable. Okay, Councillor Watson. Yeah, just very quickly, is it possible to see the um, have a map or a list of the parish councils that actually have made comment on your consultation around the local plan please so that we can see the spread of you know what parish councils have actually participated in that consultation yeah i'm sure it will be at, at, at some point clearly so it's ongoing so it, it changes it's at the moment it's probably changing from day to day but i'm sure we will be able to to, to do that at some point yeah Councillor swinglers yeah, no, it just occurred to me, I think it's partly using the word hub, um, that uh, we triangulate with talk community hubs as well as a, as a, as a kind of a potential service centre thing. Yes, yeah. I see Kevin <laughs> nodding his head there, yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you all for your attendance tonight. Uh, it is appreciated and obviously we're, it's, it's a very important part of the uh, process moving forward. Um, and have a good evening and uh, we'll see you see you later in the week next week thank you